Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is race number 11 in season number 6 of the NOFSRL Rockstar Pro Series. We are back at the Watkins Glen International to continue the Like Effect Ice Cream Super Weekend from Watkins Glen, the second of six races we're going to have this weekend, the final event of the day here on this Thursday afternoon, and today... We could be seeing a swing in the championship. Justin Knight has been leading in the points for a majority of the season up to this point. But in the last race in Nashville two weeks ago, we saw Patrick Zeit close into him by five championship points. However, though, Justin Knight starts on the pole position, and he's looking for his fourth win of the season. No other driver has won multiple races this season except for Justin Knight, but he's looking for his fourth win if he can get it done as he starts on the pole position. This is how they line up in the championship standings coming into this event here today. Justin Knight with 94 championship points. Patrick Zyke is only 5 points behind. Then you got John Gilbert 18 points behind. And Gatlin Downey 20 points behind. Ryan Kendall 32 points behind. The top 5 in points right there. And remember, only the top 10 finishers receive championship points. Uh, exactly like the Formula One point system where you get 25 for the win, 18 for second, 15 for third, and so on, um, down to one point for the 10th position. I'm going to go ahead and get these guys to roll off here from Watkins Glen. For the Watkins Glen Grand Prix, a 12-lap race here today. Both of the IndyCar races tomorrow, or one of the IndyCar races well, both IndyCar races are 12 laps long. One of them is tomorrow, the other one is on Saturday. That's what I'm trying to say right there. They're also 12 laps long. And then uh, the next event we have is the Craftsman Throwback Series, their 10 lap event uh, tomorrow afternoon here from Watkins Club. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up here throughout the weekend, and we will continue it here with the Rockstar Pro Series. And like I mentioned, Justin Knight on the pole position. He won the other road course race of the season at Le Mans. We'll have to see if he can sweep the road courses in season number eight. The, uh, very good feat if he were able to pull it off in the number 23 machine alongside him, the number seven. That car driven by Cameron Gaju, veteran driver, has been here many times before, knows what he's doing. Row number two, right behind the number 23, is the double zero of Ryan Kendall. And uh, Kendall, the guy who throws a shot at this championship. Remember, these guys still have five races left to go. Um, including this one here tonight. So uh, they're not as close to the championship as the IndyCar Series. And, of course, when the IndyCar Series is done uh, this weekend, they're only going to have one race left. These guys are still going to have four races left in the championship uh, before we crown a champion here. And uh, it'll take a little while for these guys to uh, uh, determine who gets it done here in the Rockstar Pro Series. Abe Troxel right there, the number 60 alongside Ryan Kendall. Then you got Gatlin Downey, another guy, top five in points right there in that inside lane. He's alongside the number zero machine of Zachary DeLello, who is going for his first points of the season. Still is yet to get a top ten. Aiden Shepard in the 36 alongside Ashlyn Boyd in run number four. Matt Tuck, the Atlanta winner, and Patrick Zyke, the Armory Digital winner. And the guy is only five points behind Justin Knight in the championship coming into this race. There's a very good chance Patrick Zyke could surpass Justin Knight in the championship at the end of the day. Just have to see how it all goes down. In this race, a lot of guys top having points starting top ten, which means we could see a lot of those guys getting championship points. The only guy... Who is top five in points who's not starting in the top ten is Johnny Gilbert, and he's just outside the top ten starting 13th today. So all these championship contenders are going to be running up front. It's going to make the championship battle very interesting, and it's going to make this race very interesting. We're ready to get this one started. The second race of the weekend, the first race of the Hurst Elimination Series wasn't too good. Let's hope for a better one here from Watkins Glen. Green flag in the air for 12 laps in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix.
Cameron guides you off of the jump. That outside lane's where you want to be. We saw that in the Hearst Elimination Series races a little while ago. With Monty Salato getting the race victory in that one. And we're probably going to see that throughout the entire weekend. But Gaiju off to the lead. Just tonight, Zachary DeLello up to third. Great run for him. And it's Abe Troxel and Ashlyn Boyd. The top five. Justin Knight almost had a run on Gaiju. Could not get to the inside. And number seven is going to remain out front for now. Back in here, Patrick Zyke fell back just a little bit there as he started in the fifth position. He's down the seventh now uh, with Gatlin Downey. Downey's actually the guy who really fell back. I think Patrick Zyke was actually on the outside. And Downey was on the inside to start the race, and Downey fell back to the eighth position. Aiden Shepard and Edwin Mendez round out the top ten. Let's see where everybody else is. As they come to complete lap number one here in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix, Ryan Kendall to the inside of Ashlyn Boyd. Inside lane does not work too well in turn number one, but it's the place to pass throughout every other turn on the racetrack, so that makes this place very interesting there. But uh, Justin Knight unable to get the run on Cameron Gaju anyway, and he's going to have to file back in second as Gaju is starting to pull away just a little bit. Cameron Gaju going for his second win of the season. Had a very good chance of doing so. Of course, he along with Max Neuer, two of the most experienced drivers in the field. Max Neuer's actually won before here in the Turkey Hill Series of season number two. He grabbed the victory here at the Watkins Glen International. Unfortunately for Newworth in this race, he's deep in the field to start in 17th, so didn't really work out too well for him there. Justin Knight trying to close in on Cameron Gaju, get this race lead away. Abe Troxel is currently on the number zero of Zachary DeLello. As they get through turn number six. They file out single file throughout the majority of the field. Ryan Kendall's going to try to make a move on Patrick Zyke. He was unable to make a move on Ashlyn Boyd. But for Ryan Kendall, he's an entire race behind Justin Knight coming into this thing. And he wants to gain as much as he possibly can on the number 23. But right now, really isn't, una uh, really isn't able, I should say, to do that. Because uh, he is five positions behind Knight in this thing at this point but he will get some championship points a lot of these championship contenders are inside the top five really the only one who isn't is justin or john gilbert i should say in the number four and uh, he's just outside the top 10 in the 12th position of course turn number 11 definitely a treacherous place a lot of times these guys overshoot the corner gonna see ryan kendall get a run there on patrick zyke we'll have to see if he can make the pass on the number 20 machine He's got the run to the inside, and he might be able to get it to stick. Once the tires are warmed up and they get a little bit worn out, sometimes that inside lane actually can work through turn number one. But uh, on the start of the race, it is the worst place to be. Ryan Kendall unable to make the pass on Patrick Zyke. It seems pretty tight through the field right now. Not much passing going on. It seems a little bit difficult to make a pass in these uh, heavy stock cars. Zachary DeLello, the guy who's last in the points without any points so far this season, 10 races into the season without a top 10 is right behind the guy who has won three times and has gained 94 points towards the championship. He's trying to make a pass on him. DeLello unable to get to him, however. Ryan Kendall is still right behind Patrick Zyke. He might have a shot entering turn number 7 here if he can stay right behind that number 20 machine. That's the best place to get a run on somebody is entering turn number seven and off of turn number seven into turn number eight. And it looks like Ryan Kendall might get the push this time. He's got it, I think. Ryan Kendall looking to get to the inside of Patrick Zyke. That is for the sixth position. That's a two-point gain for Kendall if he can make the pass, but he's unable to get it. DeLello got to the outside of uh, Justin Knight right there. We'll have to see if he can get to the inside during the corner. It looks like Kendall might get it here. If he's going to be the inside on turn 11, he's going to put Zyke in the outside wall. Almost in the outside wall for Patrick Zyke. But he did not hit. Got a good run off the corner, and Kendall's going to slip up just a little bit. DeLello has gotten around the number 23 of Justin Knight. Not entirely sure what happened there to set that pass up, but DeLello looks pretty fast if he's just getting around our points leader here in this series. 
I don't really know where Cameron Gaju is in the points. There's Ashlyn Boyd and Abe Troxel battling, and because of all that battling Patrick Zeich and Zachary DeLello did, they have fallen back from the rest of the field. They're now three seconds behind Cameron Gaju, but Zachary DeLello looks pretty fast right now in the number zero. And he is closing in on Cameron Gaiju. Ashlyn Boyd trying to make a move on Abe Troxel, who got around him. Actually, you know what? I think Troxel's been in the fourth position of this entire race. I haven't been paying attention too much. My keyboard's acting up here. That's not good. I need that. Zachary DeLello trying to close in on Cameron Gaiju. Take the race lead away. Ashlyn Boyd unable to make a move on Abe Troxel for the fourth position. Patrick Zyke hoping to close in, hoping Kendall stays behind him. And it's Kat, uh, Gatlin Downey, Aiden Shepard, and then the number 39 of Edwin Mendez. Rounding out the top 10, Eli Bright wants a point, however. John Gilbert's fallen back to the 14th position. He's lost a couple of positions, and with where he's currently running, he would not receive any championship points. Cameron Gaju's led every lap so far here in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix, putting on a very good show. But Zachary DeLello might be somebody you want to watch out for because, like I mentioned, he's yet to get a top 10 finish this season. And he's going for his first career Napa fan win. If he can get it here today, it'd definitely be a special one for him, especially considering how the season's gone for him up to this point. But Gaju is a guy you don't want to mess with. He's been around longer than pretty much this entire field and uh, you know he's going to be using that experience to his advantage to possibly take home this race victory. We're only on lap 5 of 12. This is one of the longer races of uh, the weekend here. With how slow these guys go this race is actually going to be longer than one of the races in the IndyCar series so uh, gotta keep that in mind. The IndyCars go much faster around here so you're going to be seeing some Pretty ridiculous speed when we get to the duel at the Glen coming up tomorrow and Saturday. Where it's the longest race of the season, or the longest race of the weekend, I should say. I can't get anything straight tonight. I really don't know why. Been like this for a while. But the uh, longest race of the weekend going to be the Lake Effect Ice Cream 400K Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time with the Chick fil A Cup Series. Ashland Boyd's falling off from Abe Troxel. The top four have pulled away from the rest of the field. And realistically, the top four all have a shot at this race victory, but can they get around Cameron Gaju is the question. Back inside the top ten. That is the battle for tenth right there between Edwin Mendez and Eli Bright. Everybody except for, well, now everyone's single file right now. Ryan Durrani trying to make a move on Daniel Voiles. He was our last race winner, and now he's last on the grid. Tough break there for Ryan Durrani uh, in this one. Cameron Gaju in the outside wall. Here we go for the race lead. Zachary DeLello taking it away from Gaju, trying to do so. And he's going to clear him entering turn number one. What a move right there by DeLello. He forced Gaju into a mistake. And we got ourselves a new race leader here in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix. It's Zachary DeLello, but this thing is far from over. Cameron Gaju is right behind him. Abe Trotsel tried to make a move on Justin Knight. He could not do it. But DeLello has been able to do it pretty well here tonight. So he's now the new race leader here at Watkins Glen. And that brought in all these guys back behind them. Ashlyn Boyd, Patrick Zyke. They've closed in. Ryan Kendall's fallen off from Patrick Zyke at this point. Gatlin Downey and Aiden Shepard right there. Not much going on back in there, but... Uh, that pass for the race lead, the first pass we have seen this weekend here at Watkins Glen. And I can guarantee you it will not be the last. I've already recorded the IndyCar races and the Chick-fil-A Cup Series race at this point. And there were a lot of passes in all of those races. But Gaji might make another pass here on DeLello. That was a rare mistake there out of the veteran driver. But it definitely worked out pretty well for Zachary DeLello to take the race lead away from the number 7. That final corner, turn number 11, is the most treacherous corner here at Watkins Glen. These guys overshoot the corner very frequently. It looks like Justin Knight might get a run on Cameron Gaggio on the outside lane. Thing is, you don't want to be on the outside entering turn number 11. And Justin Knight's going to put Gaggio on the outside again. Gaggio wide. And here comes Knight for second. And Ashlyn Boyd has gotten to Abe Troxel. He's trying to get to the inside of him. 
Oh, these guys battle for seconds. Zachary DeLello is pulling away. Justin Knight side by side with Gaju entering turn number one. And behind them, Ashland Boyd on Abe Troxel. Justin Knight holding on to that inside lane. I think the number seven might be a little bit slow because of his damage from a lap ago. But he's going to be able to keep Justin Knight behind him and remain in the second position. Abe Trox will be able to do the same. He really can't get the inside lane to work through turn one in the S's. It just simply doesn't work out for those drivers trying to make the pass. But once you hit to the carousel, that is the first good place to make a pass here. Then entering the boot in turn six, then turn seven, and even turn eight sometimes is a good place to go. But once you hit up the hill and um, go through turns eight, nine, and 11, or should I say nine, yeah, turn 9, 10, and 11, and then back to turn 1 in the S's. Those aren't really good places to make moves, but Justin Knight should have the inside on Gaju here, and I would expect him to make the move entering turn number 8. But all this is allowing Zachary Delella to just pull away with this thing at this point, and wouldn't it be something if he got the race victory here today? Like I mentioned, uh, no top 10 finishes up to this uh, point in the season. He has the exact number of points as his car number. Zero. Not exactly what you want to have this late in the season in the Rockstar Pro Series. He's pretty much out of the championship contention. I don't think he's going to have a shot at the championship, but uh, Dillo would definitely love to get this race victory. Just tonight, Cameron Gage, you got to watch out that outside lane could really get uh, edgy there off the corner. Just tonight, still side by side with Gaju. I think Delello overshot the corner a little bit. And Knight and Gaju still battling. Ashlyn Boyd able to make the move on Abe Troxel as Troxel overshot the corner. And Patrick Zyke as well. Just tonight doing all he can to keep Cameron Gaju at bay, trying to make the pass on him. He's not going to be able to keep the inside, I don't think. And Gaju able to hold on to second after all of that. They were side by side off of turn number seven, and they remain side by side all the way to the exit of turn number four. Watch out for Ashland Boyd in this one, though. He just moved himself up to the fourth position. Great run for him going right now. Justin Knight's all over the back bumper of Cameron Gaju. He's clearly much faster, but uh, he's got to find the right, uh, right place to make the pass here. Don't think he's going to have the run entering turn number seven. But Gaju is really wide off the corner. And there goes Knight trying to get the power down on the inside. And he's, he's going to try. He's going to get the inside entering turn number eight. Once again, they're going to get side by side. But I think Gaju's going to get the run up top and clear him once again. And now Ashlyn Boyd looking to take third away from Justin Knight. Just tonight, ooh, he got wide off of turn nine. Here comes Troxel back again. Patrick Zyke tried to get on Troxel earlier, couldn't do anything. He's still in the sixth position. There hasn't been any change in the bottom half of the top ten at this point. Except for maybe now, Ryan Kendall has finally caught back up to Patrick Zyke. He's got the inside lane on him with four laps to go here in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix. But like we've seen, that inside lane does not work entering turn one, and, and Kendall's going to lose a position right there to Gatlin Downey. So Downey's going to move up a position. Now, of all the drivers in the field, Gatlin Downey has the best average finishing position. And they're doing an excellent job this season at number 52, and if this were a strict points championship, like it normally is in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, where everybody gets points for each position, Downey would be the points leader. But uh, since it's a special championship, only the top 10 drivers receive championship points, and it's weighted a lot more to the guys who finish up front and win the race. Downey's uh, been kind of kept behind there. Fourth in the points coming to this thing, 20 points behind, even though he has the best average finishing position. I mean, the only reason why Justin Knight is the points leader by as much as he's got is because he has three wins on the season. I don't think he's going to win here today. Ashlyn Boyd might try to make a move here on Justin Knight. Really watch out for Absalom Boyd in this race. If he can get around Justin Knight here, I think he might have a shot at the race victory. Going to be three laps to go next time by. Patrick Zyke really wants Justin Knight to make a mistake. Because uh, if Justin Knight finishes uh, second or worse, and Patrick Zyke happens to win, 
Patrick Zeich would take the points lead away. Uh, right now, the points lead would grow just a little bit heading into next week's race at the Rockingham Motor Speedway. Ashland Boyd looking to put Justin Knight on the outside here. And Knight's going to slip up and wow! Boyd able to clear him off the corner. You do not see that very often in Turn 11. Turn 11 is the best place to make a move in the later per, uh, later portion of the racetrack and the early portion of the racetrack, both of those places combined. And he got the run and cleared them before they exited the corner, so great job there by Ashlyn Boy. We'll have to see if he can catch up to Cameron Gaggi. Meanwhile, Zachary Delello is just pulling away. All that battling earlier on, the damage on Gaggi's machine, definitely uh, hurting him a little bit there, and uh, because of that, DeLillo just able to pull away with this thing, and looks like DeLillo might get the race victory here today. If Zachary DeLillo were to win this race, it would be his first career Napa fan win. All these guys behind him, however, have won before, so we'll have to see if any of them can uh, have a shot at him, but uh, he's pulled away to a pretty significant gap right now. I really think the only guy who's going to have a chance at DeLello is going to be Ashlyn Boy. His car is very clean, but he's got to get around Cameron Gaiju here if he's going to have a chance. And he's also going to have to have DeLello overshoot turn 11 again to have a chance as well. But there's a very good chance that could happen. That's why Cameron Gaiju lost the lead from earlier on. And here comes Ashlyn Boy to the outside of Cameron Gaju. He might be able to get the run through the corner and uh, put him on the outside wall again. We'll have to see. He's going to stay behind, unable to make the move. DeLello, really, really wide off the corner. And here he comes. Ashlyn Boy to the inside. The thing is, with DeLello making that mistake, these guys cannot stay side by side for too long. And they're not going to be able to make a move. Exiting turn number one. They're going to remain side by side. Ashlyn Boyd. That's going to file behind Cameron Gaju here. They're a lot closer to the number zero now than they were earlier. We'll have to see if any of these guys can get to him before the end of the race. Two laps to go in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix for Zachary DeLello. And Ryan Kendall trying to make a move back on Gatlin Downey midway through the field. Yeah, I think, too, Justin Knight's still behind the 42 here. I think Justin Knight, Ashlyn Boyd, and Zach DeLillo have the best race cars, but Knight went a little wide through the corner, and here comes Abe Troxel. Troxel unable to make the move on Justin Knight. Patrick Zeich still stuck in the sixth position like he has been this entire race. Hasn't worked out too well for the number 20 machine. We'll have to see. If DeLello makes the mistake again, then we could be seeing Gaiju moving his way back up to the number zero. But uh, if DeLello keeps it clean from here on out, he's going to win the race. Abe Troxel on Justin Knight, entering turn number eight. Troxel trying to put Knight right ahead of Patrick Zeick, and that's good news for Patrick Zeick. You know, Patrick Zeick could easily make a move on Justin Knight before the end of this race, especially if Troxel can get the outside on him here. Troxel a little wide through the corner. We'll have to see if he can get the inside. He will. DeLello wide. Here comes Gaju. Knight did not hit the outside wall, but it's the white flag, and Gaju closed in tremendously on Zachary DeLello. I don't know what happened there, but he's all over him now. And we got ourselves a race for this race victory here in the Watkins Glen Grand Prix. Cameron Gaju, Zachary DeLello. And if they tangle, Ashlyn Boyd is right there. Cameron Gaju trying to do all he can, but I think he's got the faster race car at this point. He's found some pretty good speed, and that number seven machine has raced a clean race. He might make the move entering the carousel. Oh, yeah, he's right behind him. Will he peek to the right? He's going to wait. I don't know about that move. I would have tried to make the pass entering in the corner there. DeLillo trying to get that push, but Gaju is right behind him. Entering turn number seven. DeLillo remains in the race lead. Cameron Gaju is right behind him. The final lap of the race, the battle for the race lead. DeLillo holding an inside line. Gaju 
Cannot get to the inside of him quite yet. We'll have to see if he can get the draft down the front straight away and into turn eight. Delello still out front, but remember how much ground Cameron Gadget made up to the latter portion of the racetrack. That last lap was really good for Gaji, but it might not be enough to get the race victory. They're pretty much the same distance away from each other. Gaji trying the outside. He's not going to get anything there. But will he get something entering the corner? No, he won't quite yet. DeLello, however, is going to go wide, and here comes Gaju. The number seven trying to get it. Can't quite do it. Zachary DeLello will win the Watkins Glen Grand Prix in race 11 of the season. He finally has a top 10 finish, and it's the best place to finish inside the top 10, right up front as the race winner. He went wide, but he did not hit the outside wall. And Zachary DeLello, your race winner here at Watkins Glen, his first career Napa fan win here. And two first time winners in one day. And Monty Salato get it done in the Hearst Elimination Series. DeLello getting it done here in the Rockstar Pro Series. I will say, Justin Knight will remain the points leader. Everybody finished on the lead lap in this race. Nobody got knocked out, so a nice clean race. That was fun right there near the end. But DeLello able to hold on over the veteran driver of Cameron Gaggi, but that was one of the closest finishes we've seen all season in any series on Napa Fan. And it came at a road course of all places. Gaggi in second, Ashlyn Boy, Justin Knight, Abe Troxel, Gatlin Downey, Patrick Zyke, and Zyke ended up falling to seventh as Downey got around him there. Ryan Kendall, Edwin Mendez, and Aiden Shepard, the top ten here at Watkins Glen. Going to be interesting to see how the points stack up. Justin Knight's not going to pull away too much from the rest of the field, and he could easily lose it next time by. It's going to be next week at the Rockingham Motors Speedway, the Grand Prix of Great Britain. It's going to be a very interesting race around that square racetrack, and... Uh, going to be fun for the first and last time ever in the Rockstar Pro Series. The Chick-fil-A Cup Series is going to hold their last race there next weekend. Uh, but uh, that race is always wild in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. So we would expect it to be wild in the Rockstar Pro Series as well. But Zachary DeLello wins this wild one. It was close at the end, but Gaju did not have enough. And Zachary DeLello, the race winner here at Watkins Glen. First top 10 of the season. Thank you guys so much for watching. Congratulations to Zachary DeLillo on his race victory. Tomorrow it's the Craftsman Throwback Series, not the finale, as I will mention in quite a few races this weekend. I, I'm going to do my best. I think we're going to cut it to an eight-race season at this point, but try to finish it out at least a little bit. Uh, but that's going to be race five of the season here from Watkins Glen. The Glen 170, and then, of course, the first race in the IndyCar Series here. And let me tell you, I've already done those IndyCar races. Both of them were absolutely fantastic, and they really added to the championship battle as well. So you will not want to miss Duel at the Glen race number one tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, and then Duel at the Glen race number two Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Both races were absolutely spectacular, and uh, we're just uh, going to have some more spectacular races tomorrow right here from Watkins Glen and the Lake Effect Ice Cream Super Weekend. Congratulations to Zachary DeLillo once again here at the championship standings in the Rockstar Pro Series. And I will see you guys later. Tomorrow.